there's finally a break in the Iranian hostage situation. Some Americans will be coming home. Meanwhile, a group of local clergymen plan to pray for those who remain. California Governor Jerry Brown has suddenly become very interested in Iowa. A Mormon woman stands up for her belief in ERA. And the Huskers socket to the Cyclones and maybe bowlbound. Dave Weber will tell us all about that. These stories and more coming up next on Action News Tonight. At some stores, this is considered a sale. But at Richmond Gorman, our million dollar sale is really a sale. A sale so big, okay, it's so big you'll save 20 to 50 percent and even more in every single department at Richmond Gorman. Did I say 20 to 50 percent off? Hey, I'll see you at Richmond Gorman. The Richmond Gorman million dollar sale. We're just perfect for you. Holiday on Ice starts Tuesday, November 27th at Exarbon. Tickets available now at Exarbon and all Brandeis ticket centers. The Twilight Zone tonight at 10.30. America's leading news station. This is your update of the news tonight with Jan Rasmussen, Dave Weber with sports, and Frank Bramhall with weather. This is Action News Tonight. Good evening, I'm Jan Rasmussen. There's new hope tonight surrounding the crisis situation in Iran. The Ayatollah Khomeini says about a dozen of the hostages being held at the U.S. Embassy by Iranian students will be released soon. When is not known. The Americans who will be given their choice of leaving or remaining in Iran are the blacks and the women being held who are not thought to be spies. The others, the white males, will stay. Some inside the compound say the gesture is being made to show that the Iranians do not hate America people, just the government, and they still want the Shah returned to them for trial. Outside the embassy today, the reaction to Khomeini's move was strong, with crowds shouting, death to America. As soon as the students who are holding the embassy decide which hostages are not spies, they will be escorted to the foreign ministry by Khomeini's son. Khomeini's son is at the embassy tonight. Pressure is now on Washington to make the next move. After the hostages are freed, possibly as soon as tomorrow, about 80 Americans will still be left. Khomeini's message to the U.S. government seems clear. We have done our part. Now give us the Shaw. Here in Omaha, local clergymen are planning an ecumenical prayer service Wednesday, the eve of Thanksgiving. Organizer Reverend Ronald Sapp says Omahans of all faiths are asked to come and pray for the safe release of the Americans held hostage. Christians don't uh, believe that violence is the answer to problems that we have. And uh, we're trying to help to calm people's minds and say that God can intervene and we can't do much good by blowing uh, someone else up or nuking them until they glow or something like that. But we're trying to say, let's pray about this and let's let God intervene. We don't Reverend Sapp says the service will be held at 11 p.m. Wednesday at St. Margaret Mary's Church at 62nd in Dodge. There's trouble brewing on the border between Thailand and Cambodia tonight. The Thai military command reports that 75,000 Vietnamese troops are standing by ready to assault the Khmer Rouge guerrillas. The area occupied by the Vietnamese soldiers is on the Cambodian side of a region Thailand says is off limits to outsiders. Even relief workers trying to get food to Cambodian refugees are not being allowed in. The area is being shelled by Vietnamese and some refugees have been moved to camps out of the range of their guns. The Khmer Rouge guerrillas on the Thai side of the dispute are forces lo loyal rather to the ousted Cambodian premier Pol Pot. There's a debate surrounding the debate scheduled between President Carter and Senator Edward Kennedy in Des Moines, Iowa. It will take place in January and is sponsored by the Des Moines Tribune. One Democratic candidate feels left out as Bernard Goldberg tells us. News management has no place in American society. That the First Amendment gives the, its full protection to that uh, uh, Iowa newspaper and that it is improper to impose a gag order on my candidacy. I think it's ridiculous to talk about a gag order. I mean, that's just patently absurd. Uh, any candidate who is competing in Iowa uh, has been invited to this affair. It seems to me that uh, Governor Brown uh, wants to uh, uh, come in and participate in the debate but not participate in our politics. And that's, uh, that's what's bothersome. 
Jimmy Carter, who has been invited, has not campaigned yet in Iowa. But he does have a major organization in the state, and he is planning to campaign here next month. Senator Kennedy, the other invited debater, has campaigned in Iowa. His staff says if Brown is barred from the debate, it's not Kennedy's fault. As far as the Kennedy campaign in Iowa is concerned, it's up to the newspaper, and whatever they decide is fine with you. That's correct. If they want Jerry Brown in, that's fine with you? That's correct. If they want him out, that's fine with you? <laughs> I, you know, I, we are not in a position to be setting the terms of this debate. I think it's understandable he would want to participate in the debate. And, you know, we have no problems with that at all. I think it's also typical of Governor Brown that the first reason he would, he would look at a state like Iowa would be because of a media event. Meanwhile, Jerry Brown has just decided to make a campaign swing through Iowa next Tuesday and Wednesday, hoping to convince the Des Moines Register and Tribune that he is a real candidate in Iowa, hoping to get invited to the debate. But that's debatable, since Brown has no firm plans for a campaign organization in the state. Well, let's see what Jerry Brown does. I'm not in the business. I'm certainly not going to advise him on what his campaign strategy ought to be. I'm certainly not going to sit here and say that Brown ought to come in and do this, that, or the other thing. Or if he comes in, this will happen. There is a school of thought that says the controversy surrounding this debate is the best thing that has happened to Jerry Brown's candidacy. In that, if he is ultimately excluded from the debate, it could reinforce the underdog outsider image that Jerry Brown likes to portray for himself. And if he is allowed to debate, it gives him the opportunity to gain the stature the polls say he so desperately needs. Bernard Goldberg, CBS News, Des Moines. Another battle over the Equal Rights Amendment and the hazards of flicking your BIC. Those stories and more after this. Action, excitement, thrills, fun. Shoot out for a Z. Big time Blue Jay basketball as Creighton takes on some of the top college basketball teams in the nation. Get your tickets now for the best entertainment value in town. And then sit back, if you can, and watch the Blue Jays do their stuff. Omaha and Keyboard Castle have been named a test market for a one-time only, one-of-a-kind sale on the all-new Thomas Special Edition organ with the amazing new computerized harmonizer that will change any simple melody into a beautiful masterpiece. This Thomas Special Edition is sold exclusively at Keyboard Castle, 90th and Blondo, now through November 30th, or while supplies last. This unit would sell for $29.95. Keyboard Castle has agreed to sell at a one-time only test market price of only $18.88. Other organs by Thomas from $7.99. Keyboard Castle, 90th and Blondo. Larry Neiman's a football coach, lives right across the street from the school. Jim Kurt owns a grocery store and has a fine acreage just outside of town. The Norbert Bruns family farms on land that's been in the family for two generations. And they all have one thing in common, me. They're a Farm Mutual Insurance agent. Because no matter what people do or where they live, Farm Mutual Insurance protects them best. Farm Mutual, we make it work for you. The death count on Nebraska Road so far this weekend stands at three. 33-year-old Leota Miracle and her five-year-old daughter Tammy were killed last night when their car was struck by a Union Pacific freight train at a crossing in Central City. A 17-year-old Norfolk youth, Lee Velder, died early today when the car he was riding in struck a bridge railing on a Madison County road. Handicapped Omaha residents met with Nebraska Congressman John Cavanaugh and officials of Metro Area Transit today to see what could be done to improve Matt's handicap transportation service, Moby. Using specially equipped vans, Matt provides door-to-door -door service for the handicapped who are unable to use other modes of transportation. Considered by authorities to be one of the finest programs of its kind in the nation, Matt operates the service 500 hours a week, but some handicapped residents have asked that it be expanded even more. Transit Authority Manager Jerry Erdman says expansion of the program is possible, we but complains money is the problem. Provide basic. We have budget limitations. We're covered by the 7% lid bill, and we are all, all right now spending about six times more 
for elderly and handicapped specialized transportation than we are required to do by federal law. Today's meeting arranged by Kavanaugh didn't resolve many of the complaints raised by those attending, but MAD officials promised they would work to find solutions. If you know anything about the Mormon religion, you know that a woman of that faith who speaks out in favor of the Equal Rights Amendment is likely to be met with resistance by church leaders. That's what happened to Sonia Johnson of Sterling Park, Virginia. Do this with impunity because they're a church. Every time anybody attacks them, they say, oh, you're attacking a religion. And we go and say, this is a political organization as far as the ERA is concerned. Do not have any scruples about it. Treat them just like you would lobby them, put pressure on them, picket them. That's the kind of talk that's getting Mrs. Johnson into trouble with Mormon church leaders. She heads a group called Mormons for ERA, and because she does, her bishop called her to a secret trial to explain her ERA activities to a three-man council. They claim she's undermining the church teachings and that ERA would destroy the family unit. She figured they plan to excommunicate her. After five hours, Mrs. Johnson emerged. I know that they believe that when the president of the church takes as firm a stand as he has on the ERA, that he has been inspired by God to do so. I think on this issue he has not, and that's where we are. The trial has been rescheduled for early December, giving church officials time to review Mrs. Johnson's case. Cigarette cases come especially designed with room for them, and smokers rarely go out without them. But those handy little butane lighters may turn into dangerous weapons if not handled with care. David Nolan in Rochester, New York, has the details. Millions of lighters are on the market. Thousands are sold each day, and millions more will be. Under certain conditions, each can explode and cause serious injury. Chicago's fire department has already barred its employees from carrying the lighters on the job. Rochester's department endorses the ban. Under certain conditions, they can be very dangerous, and that's why we advise our men not to wear them on the fire ground. That if conditions are just right, they can get seriously injured. At our request, the department conducted a demonstration. Three of the nation's best-selling disposables were placed in a fire separately. In this test, the lighters exploded in less than 40 seconds. The most severe damage appeared at the bottom of the lighters. Tests conducted by the Chicago Fire Department concluded some lighters are capable of taking off like rockets. How many people do you suppose bother to read the warnings? Not too many, because it's right on the lighter that it could be hazardous under certain conditions when it's supposed to heat and flame. So it's like the cigarette warning on the package, just nobody reads it. Many companies, especially welding firms, have bans under consideration and consumers are reminded to look at and follow warnings on the disposable packs. David Nolan for CBS News, Rochester, New York. Well, it's true this beautiful weather will continue. Frank will prognosticate after this. dollars under attack you can feel it right in your pocketbook well here comes relief from service merchandise your dollar's gonna love this one step what could be simpler than polaroid's aim and shoot camera that delivers beautiful color prints in minutes to celebrate our grand opening in omaha your cost at service merchandise is only 27.93 and polaroid will give you free color film and a flash bar one step that's easy wow i needed that at some stores, this is considered a sale. But at Richmond Gorman, our million dollar sale is really a sale. A sale so big, How big is it? it's so big you'll save 20 to 50 percent and even more in every single department at Richmond Gorman. Did I say 20 to 50 percent off? Hey, I'll see you at Richmond Gorman. The Richmond Gorman million dollar sale. We're just perfect for you. America, does your grapefruit juice have too much pucker? Mm. Oh. Introducing Spee's Farm grapefruit juice for the perfect pucker. Spee's Farm is the 100% natural juice of the Texas ruby red grapefruit, so it's naturally sweeter tasting. It gives you the perfect tartness. Mm. The perfect taste. Ooh. The perfect pucker. Mm. New Spee's Farm grapefruit juice for the perfect pucker. Mm. 
We're building our reputation on one great idea after another. After another. Quasar! And your Quasar dealer has many models of color and black and white TVs, microwave ovens, video recorders, video cameras, and accessories. See your Quasar dealer now for a great selection and outstanding values. See Quasar color TV sets with 15-inch diagonal picture and remote control at Nebraska Furniture Mart. If you didn't get the opportunity to poke your head out of the house today, you missed certainly one of the more glorious autumn days in years. Photographer John Kranzer was out and about this sumptuous Saturday to see what people were up to and captured this brief photographic essay. Wow, what a great day to be outside. And I predict. Oh, yes, if, let's hear if it. John Crancer <laughs> takes the camera out tomorrow, you'll be able to get some shots just like that. Oh, gosh, <laughs> that I'm going to get out in the morning, I think, because we work all day. It's kind of hard to enjoy. Well, it's going to be cool it. in the morning, in the 40s, but uh, 40s. We'll, we'll be close to that 70 degree mark again uh, Sounds in good. the afternoon. So enjoy, enjoy. Let's uh, look at our national map and see uh, just what's going on right now. It's, uh, well, pretty much like it was at supper time, although this area of Moisture has shrunken a little bit to all from around Dallas to Houston, Corpus Christi down that way, and moving uh, off. This uh, system in the northeast is going to become a warm front tomorrow, so that's not going to bother them too much, although there's been a little bit of snow reported there. Our next weather maker is this low-pressure center over this uh, area right now of Nevada, Utah, and uh, Idaho, with a cold front running clear on down out of Canada and off about San Diego. Now you can see that there's moisture associated with it, rain in the lower altitudes and snow in the higher altitudes. It has shrunk also. It isn't raining on the west coast anymore or in northern California, uh, just uh, about as you see it. Now this system should be about uh, here at supper time tomorrow, maybe just entering the panhandle, but there's a good chance that it's going to stall and maybe even move backwards as uh, the high pressure center, now uh, centered over Mississippi and uh, Alabama, will uh, be holding it back some because uh, it is a very strong high pressure system bringing up the nice warm breezes and a lot of it right off the desert as you can feel it today and it's uh, just going to be another really nice day but uh, this could probably along with a low pressure center by the way that's about six or seven hundred miles off the coast of Oregon it'll drop down into California and start moving across and could bring us some moisture later on and there is some rain being mentioned and some cooler temperatures for Wednesday as this system will finally get organized and probably uh, be in our area at least close enough to cause us a little problem. Or that is compared to what we've got right now. 49 is the report up at Sioux Falls with 43 at Sioux City. Kind of strange, it's warmer to the north. With 52, the report from Fremont and 54 in Lincoln now at this hour. The coolest, I guess, would have to be out there at Scott's Bluff with 33 degrees. Otherwise, um, Things are pretty stable. That uh, temperature that you uh, see down at Beatrice, that 67 uh, is a supper time temperature. No uh, new report on that. So it wasn't changed. 50 degrees right now at Offutt. That's 10 Celsius. North Omaha is 53, 12 Celsius. Epley 47, 8 Celsius. Humidity at 60%. We have a south breeze at 6 miles per hour. Barometer steady 29.80. And AccuWeather says uh, for Omaha Council Bluffs and Lincoln tonight, clear and cool with a low of 42. Lincoln 43 will have a southwest wind at 14 miles per hour, and it will probably uh, get kind of gusty maybe uh, overnight, up 15 to 20 miles per hour. Partly sunny tomorrow, breezy and warm with a high of 68 in Omaha, 70 in Lincoln with a south wind 7 to 14, and as uh, gusts again, 10 to 20. Tomorrow night, variably cloudy with a chance of showers with a low of 46 in Omaha, 44 in Lincoln. Monday, variably cloudy, a chance of showers, a high of 60 in both towns. Three, uh, I suppose you could say, with Omaha Council Bluffs in Lincoln. Partly sunny and mild, Tuesday, 63 for a high. And Wednesday, that system to the west of us will probably get in the area enough to cause us uh, some showers, probably, and some cooler temperatures, but uh, it'll still be in the mid-60s, about 56 or so. We hit 70 at both Omaha, uh, North Omaha, and Epley Field, although there was quite a change, uh, quite a difference in the overnight low with 40 at North Omaha, 
33 at Epley. Is this normal for this time of year? No, we're about 15 degrees above normal. I was going to say, you keep mentioning showers instead <laughs> of snow. I love it. Well, we'll, we'll do it again tomorrow night. Okay, Frank. <laughs> The shield of the Salvation Army wasn't on sale today, but just about everything else was. To benefit its social service center, the Army conducted a super sale to empty its warehouse at 24th and Center Street. Army officials say today's turnout was the biggest ever, with people coming out in droves. Bargains could be had in everything from clothing to furniture, jewelry, and collectibles. And the money collected will go to defray expenses of the 110 people served at the Army Social Service Center. The bowl matchups are announced and highlights of the Husker Cyclone mismatch. Dave Weber is up next with all the sports after this. It's an easier kind of winter time. Counting on the Toros. The machine is definitely worth the money. In my opinion, it truly is. You get what you pay for. I did not spend too much money on that Toro for what it does for me. It's paid for itself. Boy, in weather like this, a Toro is really worth it. I'm all done now, and it's been nice talking to you, but it's cold, and I'm going in. The Toro's shining every time. America moves the snow. Haven't you done without a Toro? See longer? your Toro dealer, or check the yellow pages for a Toro dealer nearest you. This weekend, in your Sunday newspaper, you'll find this special booklet about life insurance. Life insurance for everyone between the ages of 50 and 80, with no physical examination and no medical questions. Guaranteed life insurance, regardless of your health, for only $6.95 a month. Full details are in this colonial pen booklet, and you'll find it in this Sunday's newspaper. Look for it. It could be the best news you'll read this Sunday. Boy, Mr. Hands, aren't you excited about my new hamburger joint at the West Road? You bet, Mr. Pudge. I like lots of ketchup. Oh! Mr. Pudge, now open at the West Roads. Well, today, a uh, Nebraska team said goodbye to some home fans. Some seniors uh, played their last game in front of the crowd of record crowds of 76 and plus thousands. You know, that's true. Seniors last time in front of the home fans. It seems, as a sportscaster, I hear all the time, you know, Ohio State and Michigan don't play anybody. Every year they play for the championship, and same thing with Southern Cal and somebody else out in there. But every year, Nebraska and Oklahoma mm. coming up next Saturday, <laughs> and the winner goes to the to the championship yeah. game or the Orange Bowl. Never fails. It's the it's the same all over, I guess. All the the teams that are really good have good programs and stay good. The last obstacle to Nebraska's traditional Big 8 championship game with Oklahoma was removed today as the Huskers downed Iowa State in Lincoln, 34-3 before the 105th straight sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium. John Nicely has highlights of the win. The Huskers had some unfinished business today in Lincoln to mop up Iowa State and get everything in order for the big game next week. It was not a great day for Jarvis Redwine. He carried four straight times in the opening series and left the game. A bad ankle. And he felt he could go back in and play, and he wanted to go back in and play, but we just told him, well, we'll hold you out and get you ready next week. And I think he'll be full speed by Oklahoma. I'd be very surprised if he wasn't. Good news for Nebraska fans. Also good news is the fact the Husker offense is back in form. It's first quarter action, second down. The Huskers lead 3-0. Jeff Quinn at quarterback. Quinn back to pass. He's in trouble. Quinn is free for Tim Smith. 23 yards, first down the Iowa State seven yard line. The quarter ends, and three plays later, Dean Sukup makes it 6 0, Nebraska. Now, first down, the Huskers driving again. Quinn to I am him. 10 yards, first down the Cyclone 30 yard line. Hip with 61 in the game today. It's second down on the 13. The Huskers moving for the goal line. Quinn to Junior Miller. Nebraska 12, Iowa State nothing. The try for two follows. Quinn fakes the handoff to Johnson. He's in trouble. To Kenny Brown. Nebraska 14, Iowa State nothing. Cyclones trying to get back in the game. It's third down. Rubley at quarterback. Fumble. The Huskers have the football. First down, the Iowa State 28. 
Huskers trying to convert for six more. Quinn passing on first down to Junior Miller. He's leveled by Mike Schwartz, but Junior hangs on to the ball. It's third down on the two-yard line. Quinn to Andre Franklin. Nebraska 21, Iowa State nothing. Still second quarter action, and the Huskers threatening again on the Iowa State 20-yard line. Quinn for Junior Miller. Nebraska 28, Iowa State nothing. The halftime score. Finally a break for Iowa State. Quinn passing in the third quarter. Intercepted by Mike Leaders of Iowa State. Second down, the Nebraska 24 chance for the Cyclones to score. But watch the blitz by Mark Leroy. L.C. Cole is there. Leroy back on his feet and he makes the play. Iowa State unable to score. Now fourth quarter action. The ball at the Iowa State 25. The Huskers moving. Quinn to Junior Miller. 17 yards inside the 10-yard line. Quinn takes it in to make it 34-0 Nebraska. Iowa State added a late field goal to make the final. Nebraska 34, Iowa State 3. Inside the state locker room, Donnie Duncan marveled at the play of Junior Miller. Any team that has Junior Miller is going to have some success throwing the ball. Miller, six catches for 83 yards and two touchdowns. And 22 yards rushing. What about the black shirts? I really felt that going into the game that we could hold them down, but I thought they'd score some points, and I thought they'd move the ball on occasion, and of course, uh, they just didn't do it. Nebraska 34, Iowa State 3. John Nicely for Action Sports in Lincoln, Nebraska. With the season unbelievably already approaching the final couple of weeks, some conference titles were decided today, some left up in the air. Here's a look at all of today's scores. First off again in the Big 8, it was Nebraska over Iowa State. Oklahoma edge Missouri 24-22, the Tigers' second really fine game in a row. Oak Colorado over Kansas 31-17, Oklahoma State beat Kansas State. Elsewhere, it was number one Alabama over Miami of Florida, shutout. Ohio State beat Michigan in their big game every year, 18-15. Southern Cal is idle. Florida State rolled over Memphis State. Look at that. They're going to the Orange Bowl, and look what they do. They roll it up 66 to 17. It was Texas over TCU 35-10. Arkansas beat Texas A&M 22 to 10. It Houston is idle. BYU over Utah shut out. Pittsburgh shut out Army 40 zip. It was Purdue over Indiana. Clemson upset Notre Dame 16-10. Auburn over Georgia 33-13. Washington beat Washington State. South Carolina over Wake Forest in an upset, and Penn State defeated Temple. Mississippi over Tennessee. Baylor defeated Rice 45-14. Iowa beat Michigan State by 10. It was Georgia Tech over Navy. North Carolina over Virginia. And SMU shocked Texas Tech. California over Stanford 21-14. LSU final score in that ballgame. Now we got it for you. 21-3 LSU over Mississippi State. Other scores UCLA over Oregon. South Dakota State over Idaho. A big game for South Dakota State as they hope for an NC2A Division II playoff bid, 27-13, and Northwestern of Iowa defeated Midland College of Fremont 40-26 in an NAIA quarterfinal game. Tonight at 6 was the earliest the College Football Bowls invitation could be sent out officially, and the 14-odd postseason extravaganzas wasted no time in offering bids. Here's what has happened so far. Now, these are, as yet, most of them are confirmed. We do have a couple of question marks, though. In the Orange Bowl, it'll be Florida State against the winner of next week's Nebraska-Oklahoma game. In the Rose Bowl, Ohio State will play USC or Washington. USC will go if they beat UCLA on Saturday, and if they do, then Washington will play in the Sun Bowl. In the Sugar Bowl, it's Alabama or Georgia. If Alabama can beat Auburn next week, they'll go against the loser of the Southwest Conference or the second-place finisher, Texas or Arkansas. Houston also has a chance to go to the Sugar Bowl from the Southwest Conference. Then in the Cotton Bowl, it'll be Arkansas, Texas, or Houston, whoever wins the Southwest Conference, against Nebraska or Oklahoma, the loser of the Nebraska-Oklahoma game Saturday. If Arkansas beats SMU this coming Saturday, they'll go to the Cotton Bowl, and then Texas will be the team to go to the Sugar Bowl and play either Alabama or Georgia. Confused? Okay. Blue Bonnet Bowl is next. Purdue versus nobody knows yet. In the Peach Bowl, It'll be Baylor versus Clemson in the Hall of Fame Bowl. It'll be South Carolina versus as yet an unnamed opponent in the Gator Bowl. Got two teams for you, Michigan versus North Carolina. The Fiesta Bowl will have Pittsburgh versus an as yet unnamed opponent. Tangerine Bowl, same thing. Wake Forest against your guess. 
Sun Bowl will have Washington versus Houston if Washington does not win the Pac-8. In the Liberty Bowl, it'll be Tulane versus Penn State. Penn State got another bowl game. How about that? In the Holiday Bowl, it'll be Indiana versus either BYU or San Diego State, whichever one wins next week in the WAC Athletic Conference showdown. And in the Garden State Bowl, it'll be Temple versus somebody. And I got this in just recently. At Kearney in the Girls State Volleyball Championships, North Platte won the Class A championship over Lincoln Northeast. Ainsley won the Class C and Hampton won the Class D. The Class B yet to be decided. Okay, Dave. We'll be right back with Frank's evening cast, or rather breakfast cast, there we go, after this. gentle waterfall and covered bridge. Share these feelings with us every day. Side that brightens the life of everyone it touches. Touch someone you love with a gift from Zales and light up their Christmas. No one knows more than the diamond store Zales. Behind all the fun and games at the 1980 Lake Placid Winter Olympics are a whole lot of fun and games. John Deere is providing a hundred pieces of snow equipment from heavy-duty construction and snow removal machines to snowmobiles just to help make sure the Olympics get off the ground. Hello. Mom, it's the lady from television. <laughs> no, honey, this is Kathy. It's probably my jacket. At Century 21, we really get to know your house. It's beautiful. Windows. Because what's special to you could be special to someone else. Self-cleaning oven? We'll yes. remember to show buyers all the details. Copy. Thank you. At Century 21, we're sold on your house before we sell it. Could we show it this afternoon? Well, the breakfast cast, let's call it 7 a.m. Can you imagine that on a Sunday morning? Windy, clear, 42 degrees. We uh, had a low of 40 this morning and 70 this afternoon. That at North Omaha, 33 and 70 at Epley. No rain, of course. We'll have an overnight low of 42, high of 68 or so tomorrow. With the sunrise as you see it. And you know that the first day of winter isn't far away, but you can't tell by walking around outdoors, Jan. That's all the news for now. Join us again tomorrow night at 10. Stay tuned for the Twilight Zone. Good night. <laughs>